Sponsored by someone? Um, sponsored by Ten Tree. No, I'm not. What is what is Ten Tree? It's a brand, a clothing oh, brand. It's, oh, it's like a it's like an actual hat that you buy from a place that makes hats. Yeah, that you buy from a place that makes hats. That's right. You thought it was actually like a like a swag item or something. It's usually the case, you know. Yeah, usually. No, it's a company called Ten Tree. They uh they plant ten trees for every item you buy. Oh Kinda wow. Cool. Kind of like the guy who, the Tom guy who gave away shoes to poor people every time he bought shoes. It's oh, probably yeah. for them. It's probably selfish. There's probably some corporate tax write off or something. I don't know. <laughs> but you feel warm and fuzzy when you when you do it. You know. Have you seen those videos? That there's like there's a few cases of this. It's like it'll be someone that just grew a forest in ten years or something. And have you seen them walk around and plant trees? No. It, it's it's really crazy. They'll have like a sack full of like little saplings. And do they like throw them into the ground or something? Yeah, they'll, they'll like step and in like one motion, they'll like, they'll do something to, with some kind of tool and then they'll mm. like plant the tree mm-hmm. and then they're, they're doing them like one every like couple seconds. And I guess I have seen this or I had a dream because I can, <laughs> I can picture someone doing that. Like they're kind of like throwing the little sapling in like really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. It's crazy. The other thing though is have you seen, there's this funny thing where um, there's human made forests. And they'll grow and they kind of look, oh, like, wow, that's pretty impressive. Like, we, we made this forest. Then you'll see a side-by-side shot with, like, an actual forest. And it's, like, way more chaotic and, like, crazy. Like, you just can't. It's hard to yeah, replicate that. can't replicate nature. Does yeah. it have, like, I wonder if it has downstream effects for, like, habitats for animals. Like they Probably. Can't it's definitely there. less yeah. robust and, and stuff like uh, that. Yeah. It's like we plopped, a like, a... A suburb in the middle of the, the <laughs> yeah. field and we're like move in come on animals <laughs> we're good at this stuff we're humans we build things <laughs> look at this forest liz yeah. showed me this video yesterday where it was one of those oh a day in my life type of things um but it was with this woman in south africa i don't know if you saw it but uh it's like her with her like young kids and they live in this like complex it's like a it's, it's an apartment it's like an apartment complex. Yeah. Then they like, they leave and they walk and they're like super happy. Like, oh, I love living here. Like, you know, this is my day, blah, blah, blah. And they're walking. There's like this paved over area and they walk to like this cafeteria where they like, they're served dinner. And it's like this crazy, weirdly structured life. Like the whole community seems like... Uh- they take care of everything for you. Like there's like, it's like a designated movie. play zone, designated it's like Pleasant area Hill or something. Yeah. It's there's a movie exactly, like that, right? Yeah, exactly. It's like one of those like type of weird movies. And it's, it's just so weird to me that going to, and like the, the dad met them after work at the cafeteria. It's like <laughs> eating at a cafeteria <laughs> as a family, as, as something's just adult. weird about yeah. that. You know, okay, it so- feels like, there was something some, this is like post-apocalyptic and they were able to survive in this like <laughs> community or something i'm gonna say something and you're gonna make fun of me because i'm that boring white family that moves in with the white tesla in your neighborhood in the <laughs> big cube box we looked at a neighborhood like this like this crazy planned community in florida where they had like this whole main street with like all these shops and there's like little like electric go-karts that everyone can just ride around freely and go-karts leave them or golf carts or golf carts yeah golf carts they go-karts had like, would be fun they had multiple yeah that would be fun they had like multi-seat bikes where like families could hop on a bike and ride it but you just like leave them laying wherever it's like the whole community the whole it has like a store like a grocery store yeah. and like a whatever town center there's just like this whole thing played out and like your whole life just lives in this little community or this big community it's like a huge amount of florida uh whatever what's that what's that called not the swamp they like converted Wait, a bunch what, of... was this literally like disney because uh no because orlando is famously or like disney has famously these like planned back when oh, like really? Walt disney was still alive like they were doing all this crazy stuff uh there's parts of disney world in florida that are like planned where you can live there like that yeah now, this like was, this by was disney. south florida it was uh i think it's somewhere between like naples and fort uh myers it was uh it was this mm. xnfl player that like retired and built this community i don't know mm, interesting it's interesting i'll have to find the name of it but it definitely had those vibes like 
uh like everybody's just like wearing the same thing and like <laughs> hi neighbor <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like creepy kind of vibes but we considered it <laughs> Well, and it's like it, everyone has to build one of these like three different types of houses and you mm -hmm. have to choose one I mean, of these my parents, builders. My parents' house is one of those type of yeah. situations. It's like one of five models. Yeah. That mm -hmm. yeah, was very interesting. Yeah. It's, it's crazy when real estate developers go beyond the house and they're like, okay, we got to like make this more yeah. attractive. So we're going to build these like businesses and everything mm -hmm. is like kind of one cohesive thing. I definitely get the appeal. Like there's definitely like, uh, like a lot of stuff just taken care of. For you but the reason yeah. i thought of this was it's like the forest like when you do a centrally planned thing it's just gonna feel off like mm -hmm. no matter how hard you try what's interesting is uh my neighborhood in new york battery park it's somewhat of a planned community um more so than like any other part of new york uh because like it used to be tip, a landfill right? yeah it's like the tip of yeah okay mm-hmm it used to be a landfill. So basically when they would, yeah, when they would New like York dig up, when they would dig up like other parts of New York to like build mm -hmm. stuff, they would just dump everything <laughs> off the, uh, like off the coast and like in the Hudson. And eventually it was so much stuff that they just, that they like cut, they like basically built new land by doing wow. this. They expanded the land out from digging all this stuff from the center of the island. And they cut like a perfect rectangle. And they like actually like codified it and made it like stable ground. Uh, and then the whole, that whole, all of Battery Park is on a land lease. So like all the buildings are like taking, they're leasing the land from the government. And hmm. it, it's like this semi planned thing. Um, but it's actually, it's, it's, I would say for a planned thing, it came out pretty good. But it has the exact same problem, which all planned things have, which is uh, it's just brittle. There's, there's not really like the right type of businesses. Like they're kind of in like weird locations, like the natural emergence of them didn't pop up where for what it has, like it has really great parks, like right on the water. Like it's, it's super nice in a lot of ways, but it's to it feels totally different from the rest of New York where you can just like walk mm -hmm. one foot and like run into like a great restaurant or like you can kind of get everything yeah. you need at arm's reach. It feels like something's like a little off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's also in New York. So there's that downside. I mean, you have to live <laughs> on Manhattan. Well, we're going to go to, assuming you're coming, because you certainly haven't yeah, confirmed, yeah. we're going to New York in November, and I'll try to show you a better time than you've Wait, had what before. Are what, what, are, what are the dates? What are the dates? We're going to get there. No, so we're going to, we're, Liz will probably help us book everything next yeah. week. Uh, November 15th to the 20th is the plan. 15th to the 20th. Yeah, I think, I think so. I better double check with Casey, but I think it's clear. <laughs> i can't miss a terminal gathering that's like i know the ultimate fomo the, yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> uh what you been doing yeah. well or what's been going on what what, what, what is happening well i need to ask you what have you been doing because you've basically <laughs> fallen off the face of the earth no one so has heard I, from you yeah i've been reflecting i think i do this every like six months i think i have like a yeah i'm done with twitter i'm done with the internet i guess normally i'm a little more high touch like even if I drop off of Twitter, like with you, uh, we skipped the podcast last week. I, so literally submitted the stat news app to the store this morning. Wow. Uh, finally, it was, it was like this, uh, crazy crescendo to like, I hit the button and then it was like, I'm sorry, you can't submit because you like track or something and you had to fill out this form and blah, blah, blah. It was like this big rejection. As soon as I hit the button, it was so anticlimactic. So then I had to spend an hour like doing a bunch of Apple paperwork, but then I submitted it. So <laughs> it's submitted. Feels good. They're going to reject yeah. it. Probably too many web I views. Mean, probably <laughs> no, honestly, too many web views. I don't know how people do this. So okay. if we talked about mobile development on here much, no. I'm, my cord is wrapped up. Man, how bad is it wrapped up? Can't hear you.
How about now? There we go. That was weird. Uh, did you hear anything I said about my cord being wrapped up? I heard you said your cord was wrapped up. And then and it went I out? I saw you get up, and then it was gone. It was so tangled into the chair that it was, like, sucking me in. Like, I couldn't move. <laughs> and I don't know how I got it so wrapped up, but I guess it yanked something out of my audio interface and, and like, disconnected it from my computer. So, anyway, it's back. Uh, have we talked about native app development much? No, you probably have. It's all probably fresh in your mind now. It's very fresh in my mind. Uh, it's such a... Okay, so the, the dilemma for us, like, we have this giant website, right? And it's been 10 years of building this giant website with all kinds of stuff, like visualizations. It's sports statistics. So there's all kinds of different custom visualizations for different sports and like tons of just UI that we would never want to rebuild on a native app using native stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like we are the perfect case for using web views to have a native mobile app because people constantly ask us for a native mobile app. We want to say like, oh, the web, the, the mobile web experience is really good. Just use it on your phone. It's fine. Like for the kind of site we have, it's like, it's fine. It's, it's like a Wikipedia style, like lots of links, mm -hmm. click into pages, whatever. But people constantly badger us about having an app. Like every announcement we make, there's like five replies to the tweet that are like, we just want an app, bro. Like everybody <laughs> wants a mobile app. So we're like, okay, fine, we'll build a mobile app, but it's mostly going to be the web experience. You're just going to have a little bit of native like navigation at the bottom. And that's basically it. So it's all these web views. And I've talked to a few different like native development experts, if you will. Uh, and they've given me the green light that this is a case where, yeah, it probably makes sense. We're a small team. Like we're not going to have a mobile developer that just does mobile development. Probably makes sense to just use web views. Like I've gotten the sign off. I'm not just like spitting in the face of every mobile developer. So we have this case where it makes sense, but it's just terrible. It's such a terrible experience to build a native app using these web views all the things you're used to doing in the web and sharing state and local storage and cookies and sessions, it, all of it is just like ass backwards and broken and you can't do anything you want to do. The amount of like effort to build one little thing on the mobile app compared to the web, it's just insane. And I don't know if it's just because of our use case, we're trying to like shoehorn a web experience into a native app. That's why we're having such a hard time. Maybe if you're building like a purely native app and it's a totally different use case and it's not an existing property on the web maybe it's not this bad but it's bad and like the the web view is like a community project it's not like built in to react native used to be i think but then they spun it off and it's this community thing the number of like quirky bugs for this being like oh it's cross-platform it works on android and ios the number of things that just don't work on android or don't work on ios and you can't use this flag on this but you can on this it's a mess okay so fuck soapbox over i'm done well my question is uh does it make like you guys use react native for this what about yeah, those Expo. frameworks that are really more oriented around just web stuff what what are those frameworks are you gonna say like flutter and all these other words i've heard people say and i've ignored no for not not flutter like before react native came out there were all these like app development frameworks that were just around the idea of like shipping web views but mm. like, th there's a bunch of them right like i'm trying to remember, i don't know. I'm, I'm blanking on any of the names but they so react native is more oriented around oh we're gonna help you build a native app just in a different way mm -hmm. whereas so i can see why maybe doing web view stuff in there they just don't care that much about because the whole point of doing react native is to not do web stuff i guess um mm. i'm blanking on like was it like capacitor capacitor oh i JS? have heard of that Th there was there's like a oh ionic ionic is the one i'm trying ionic? to remember ionic okay yeah why why didn't you say this to me like two months ago dax three months ago why, why are we just now talking about this this is not good but then i'm realizing like well i asked some experts dax and they said i could just use the web view in react native and then i realized i asked react native experts <laughs> <laughs> should i use a web view in react native yes and maybe if i would have asked should i use react native they would have said no <laughs> oh man they probably Ionic. said yes anyway yeah but... probably a new yeah, way to so build that... a ship for mobile oh my word if this is better and easier and i just could have saved a lot of hair again gray. i don't know anything about this i've never used it but positioning wise it seems more related to like just straight up using a web view Again, yeah. I don't know how that relates to like literally just pointing to an existing web app, which is probably what you're doing, right? You're not even like 
Yeah. Yeah, we're not building from scratch. It's like literally hitting custom pages on our website that are kind of catered to this mobile experience. Yeah, so I, in some I, cases, I don't know. It's the same pages, but... I, I think that actually would still work because this is injects certain APIs and you can just access them. Um, but yeah, I'm because I feel like if anyone has spent time figuring out the problem that you had, it's it's these people, yeah. which is because okay. they're helping you build ship a. So I'm gonna look into it. I do see whatever. on their website like how you can also ship it ship to or build apps across iOS, Android, and the web. And React Native does that too. Why would you build? Why in the world would you build a web app using oh, React Native? I saw the craziest demo recently. Oh, there's reasons to do it. It was cool. Okay, I mean, I can't share too much because I'm just gonna blow up their, mm, you know, them being the excited stealth, one. But stealthy, you got an inside tip kind of things. Yeah, it's, it was it's, it's, it was a really cool bringing together of several technologies. One of them being React Native for web. Uh, the reason being is like you just want a single code base and you want to deploy the two three platforms. I think <sighs> in theory that's like I can I actually really considered it at one point for something I was building. Really. Doesn't like, just why, hamstring why the web development so much? Yeah, but it depends on what you're building. If what you're building... So for you guys, it's like StatMuse is like the golden property. And then this is like a it's companion. Like a side thing. Okay. Yeah. If where you're building things... a thing like... Like what was the famous app? Was it Snapchat or Instagram that didn't even have like a web experience? It was just mobile for the longest time they're like this huge mm, billions of probably, user mo mobile app yeah probably snapchat right i don't remember so maybe that case where time. the web is just kind of an afterthought yeah or like they're all equal um mm. like if you think about i don't know I, I can see some productivity stuff being in this case where you're mm. equally expecting people to use it on the mm -hmm. go as at home like i mean this the cloud the simplest example is like a shopping list app that's like you can oh, see, see how like all three are kind of equal and it's not like yeah. you're going to be doing crazy web stuff. Yeah. Okay. I just yeah. can't imagine leaving behind things like Next.js when I could build a website <laughs> with Next.js. That's just insane. But <laughs> man, I can't wait for you guys to see this, this new thing. Uh, it's, Next it's JS really killer cool. confirmed. Is that? <laughs> no, it's just, I think we're finally just rotating back to stuff that's actually useful. <laughs> Like After spa like stuff. Spending four years on. Is? Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 just like a great example of again using this React Native for web thing and just having a single code base that works across all three plus a few other things mm. that make it all nice. Mm. Um, Can you give me a hint about who it's who's doing this? Is it someone we've heard of? I've heard of. I don't get yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you after. Uh, okay, I, don't, I don't, I just yeah. don't want to say it publicly yet. That's for the, the Patreon subscribers. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's yeah. funny. Um, okay, so you've been working on this app, and it sounds like it's been hell. Are you yeah. done? Or you feel like you're... I I'm mean, sure there's going to be a bunch of other issues that come release, up. The first release, we already have like fast follow releases two and three planned. So, such is life. Do you feel like you'll ever just like be cool? Just like, I'm cool with cool. the pace things are going. I mean, not cool, cool, but like, <laughs> my wife is like, why Why do you get so like into each release? Why do you push so hard to get this thing out the door when you just have more stuff to do after that? It's not like I'm just done. So like, why can't I just take a nice, easy pace and just be like, I get done what I get done every day. Life is good. I enjoy where I'm at in life. Why can't I just be that way? I think I have, I think I flip between those two modes. I think- really? Yeah, because if you look at, I mean, if I think about SST right now, we're definitely in the, so we, we call it um, like dummy mode. It's like, it's because uh, <laughs> like we don't, the, the phase we're in right now, we don't have to use our brains too much. We spent like um, six months building Ion and that was like a lot of like kind of what you're talking about, like, mm -hmm. you know, focused pushing. effort and like, you know, pushing. Yeah. But now we've like done all the thinking and now every day we wake up, there's a bunch of issues. We just fix them one by one. And they're all like pretty mm -hmm. straightforward, uh, bugs, new features, whatever. And like, mm -hmm. we don't have to, like the order we do them doesn't matter. Like we're just totally reactive and we just have to do everything. And if we do this for six months, we'll look back and I'll be like a very polished mm. product with a lot, with a lot of stuff. So yeah, it feels more relaxed in that I'm not like having all these existential questions of like, who are we? What are we? What do we want to do? You know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So I feel that shift. So I don't I feel like I'm always in. Yeah, I'm not mode. always. I guess I go through it's all about the like release calendar. Like if we have a target date, like we're trying to get something out for a certain time frame, then the closer it gets to that time frame, the more stress, the more I push. And then after that, I'll go through a few weeks where I'm like it's the beginning of every new phase is like pretty chill. Like I'm mm -hmm. still getting stuff done, but it's just like I'm not freaking out every day. Like I'm I gotta get this done. Yeah. That's probably normal, yeah. I guess. I think the other thing is is like we don't really have releases like that. Like we're mm. just You're uh, just always continuously releasing. <laughs> C I C D. C I C D, yeah. <laughs> you ship uh, to production like fifteen times a day. You don't even think about it anymore. Well, it's Fridays. easy for us because the thing we release is a CLI, yeah. which is version. So, like, hmm. if it's broken, it's fine. Just go back to the previous version. Yeah, web apps, know? not so much. When you release the web app, everyone gets the web app. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. I just finish and I just run one command and it's out. I don't have to really think about anything. And if it hmm. breaks, I'll just do another one. So, yeah, it's, it's just different. Um, but I do think so. We, we do have moments where we're like, doing a more like release oriented thing and it is good because it kind of forces us to go faster than we normally would or like mm. like there's a good impact to that i just don't think we mm -hmm. can be in like that all the time no can't be like that it always but it feels like to me and to my family when we're in the thick of it it feels like this is how it always is like i gotta chill out because this is always we're always pushing but then we're not we forget when we come off of it there are periods of relative chill speaking of relative chill uh did you see relative chill at home did you see the mm -hmm. uh, amazon return to office thing oh i did and a bunch of people i saw people leave like big names chris munns left i saw uh other big names people announce they were leaving aws is that all over the rto i actually saw the people say they were leaving before i saw before yeah office. so I, I don't know how related it is i mean they've been bleeding people for a while so yeah it might, might be a continuation of that but yeah i think they said officially back five days in the office and everyone's really angry and there's a lot of discussion going what on was about it? it do you know what it was before that three but like so you had to live in, in seattle and, you had to be no no, no. three office. days in your hub and now it's you have to be where your team is which oh, is likely not or it's not possible it's not hub. where you live and you'd have to move oh so lots of people are having to go back to seattle potentially like where their mm -hmm. team existing and you gotta commute that sucks. I mean, for them, I would never work <laughs> in a place where I had to live somewhere specific. <laughs> Fifteen years now, nobody's telling me where to live at this point. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm totally on the evil side of this. Like, everyone's oh, you think hate it's my, good? My I saw your. This. I saw your contrarian <laughs> take. When I see takes like that, when you say stuff like that, I just think like, do you really believe that, or you just want to be the opposite of what everyone else is saying? Is it both? No, I've been annoyed by this forever. And a mm -hmm. lot of it is like personal and irrational, but mm -hmm. I do think I also have a rational case. Uh, like you, I've worked mostly remote my whole career. Um, a lot of time was as a consultant. I've seen a lot of companies. Almost none of them do remote well. Like almost mm -hmm. none of them do remote well. That makes sense. I will only ever work for remote companies. So I'm willing to, you know, sacrifice the ability to work at yeah a lot of these places that you know pay a lot because they require to be in the office and that, that, that's been my position for a long time yep um i don't think a company like amazon that never intended to be remote that attracted yeah. that kind of offered this very stable straightforward path of like making a lot of money i can see why them just flipping to remote overnight doesn't work out yeah right like if i'm being totally honest like a lot of these companies like the motivation isn't very high then the relationship is how do I do the least amount of work while still getting what I need? And there's like a tension and that's like mm. at these big companies, that's kind of how it is. Mm -hmm. And I think when you go to remote overnight, it just swings really hard in one way. Um, and, and the probably, reason I did believe they do this, it in 2020, did they do the COVID? Is that yeah, why it, it was all because yeah. of COVID? Uh, -huh. uh, and there's like, there's different people at fault for that. Like some of it's a company, some of it's the people that, that are mm -hmm. working there, but or like, just like the employees. Um, but, the arguments that people make of, of why Amazon is doing this, they're not very good. They're like weird conspiracy theories. I'm sure mm. some of it is because yeah, they get to like, it's like a free layoff. Um, uh, but like it's a way to pare back your workforce. 
Like yeah, nice which again, without. I don't like that. I, I'm not going to say that's not a case, but it's like a random layoff and like yeah. being willing to just like randomly lose people is like it's kind of a stretch, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I'll acknowledge, okay, maybe that that is there I've somewhere. De- I've definitely seen the extreme uh conspiracy theories like commercial real estate like somehow yeah that whole it's just like it's it's not that that it's like like yeah so when people start talking like that i know like you just want you just like got remote for free and you like don't really want to fight for it and you want to have some like thing to complain for Mm -hmm. if you really want to work remote and you care about that quit and go find a place like be good enough to go find a place that is like hell yeah we'll hire you Mm -hmm. and this just reverts back to how it used to be which is uh i work for a bunch of companies that were not remote i went and i interviewed and i got them really excited about me then i had to negotiate letting me work mm-hmm. remote mm-hmm. and that was hard and annoying and oftentimes it was a no but yeah you can still pull it off if like you really care about it so yeah um but that, that's one side I'm, I'm that's like the personal side where i'm just like i just find the complaints around as annoying like you care about it like you can make it happen right yeah yeah um but it, the other side is, is go ahead I think Amazon is just needs a reset. Like, I think any kind of big change is probably going to be good for them, like, mm. especially AWS. If we look back over the last four or five years, like, I feel like things have been kind of different. Like, they haven't really shipped as much. Like, they really seem to be lagging. There's like this, there's just like a lack of cohesion. Um, and then and they're like falling the- behind in a bunch of places. So, any kind of reset for them, I think, would be good. Yes, that means losing a bunch of good people and there's going to be pain in the short term. Mm-hmm. But, I think that will be, I I just think that's probably good for them. They probably way over hired during COVID. That was definitely a thing. Mm. Um, Yeah, because like the internet usage kind of soared during COVID, right? So internet companies maybe over hired or no? Yeah, but like it was also just money was cheap too and free flowing. So like I'm sure like any decision that, you know, there's a 20% chance to make the decision, it probably turns like an 80% chance and it just, Mm-hmm. you know bloated everything you, and yeah that's why you, you have this nice cushy job it's because of that over hiring so at some point there's yeah. going to be a correction do you, do you have any opinions on whether the you said the last few years the aws has kind of been falling behind and just like kind of a mess a drift do you think it lines up with jassy leaving like they had Celebsky in there and then now this new guy like do you think it's a leadership problem or just random and who cares i have no idea i, I don't i just don't know any of the details i yeah I, I wonder if Jesse was really good at everything. I mean, he's now the the Amazon CEO, right? So yeah. He must be really good at everything. Yeah. I, again, I don't know if it was, if it's like. I just don't know. Like, they, they might just be at a certain. Maybe they started making money too easily. Like, that's also like mm. a weird dynamic that messes yeah, this stuff up. Yeah, you don't have right. to fight for it anymore. It's just kind of like getting fat and happy. And yeah, they're making a hundred yeah. billion dollars revenue a year. It's still growing. Like that's. Pretty mm-hmm. outrageous numbers. When when you say they've fallen behind, you, you think are you talking like, like the cloud flares of the world, like in the serverless kind of ways, like the new edge or new era app development ways, or what what kind of things come to your mind when you say AWS is falling behind? Yeah, I would say I, I, they think they've fallen behind on AI, and so they've hard pivoted <laughs> to everything about AI they can possibly do. Yeah, no, but that is a, that actually is true. Like why, yeah. like they should be leading AI really yeah. um i don't think they need to reorient their whole business around it but like yeah it is weird they just were completely caught flat footed yeah. on that i just don't see them the same being, way about apple too sorry yeah a, a lot of the big companies um yeah i mean i just don't see them leading in a, in a lot of places in terms of like pushing mm-hmm. how we do things like you know pushing the bar on that mm-hmm. um they're not like lowering prices as much as they used to they're not like didn't they have didn't they actually raise prices on something like the I first think for the time. first time ever they raised prices on yeah. something i can't remember what it was um so yeah I, i'm just like not even feeling the big that guys. thing sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm just not feeling that thing i'm looking for where i'm like oh yeah there's like a lot of energy here and they're like mm-hmm. pushing and they're thinking about you know disrupting their own products and all that there are yeah. like exceptions i do think there's some stuff coming out that uh is going to be interesting but but it's been a couple of reinvents yeah. that were kind of underwhelming like a mm-hmm. couple of years of like I don't know. I didn't leave reInvent being like, man, life is just going to keep getting better. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I just think they need to reset whatever big disruption they need to do is, is probably good. Yeah. Um, yeah. On the remote thing, I guess I always thought when I started my career remote as well, 
And I always thought like, especially leading up when the COVID stuff happened and everybody, it was like, oh, it's accelerating the, the transfer to all of us being remote. I had this assumption that it was like better and that over time, more and more people would work from home. And I think what you're saying is, is reminding me that's not true. Like it's not for everybody. It's not for every company. And it seemed like all the articles came out when COVID hit that like, this is just going to accelerate the work from home movement and everyone's going to be remote in five years. Uh, and turns out everyone's being sent back to the office five years. Yeah. Later. It's going back to where it used to be, which is if you can get a company really, really excited about you, they'll still let yeah. you work remote. And if it's the right kind of company, like to your point, an Amazon yeah. probably doesn't make sense to be a largely remote workforce. It's like, is it just big companies? Is it just like when you're a company at Amazon scale, is it just harder to be remote? If you didn't, I guess, like you said, if you didn't start remote. Okay. So I'll give you like the dynamics because our team is remote. Uh, You're three people, what that... Dex, and Amazon's about what? Three million people. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I think if I explain the dynamics, I could actually clearly explain why like, yeah, yeah. it's going to be extra harder for a company like Amazon. When we work remote, what that looks like is work infiltrates way more oh yeah of our of our life because mm -hmm. we don't have clock in clock out we yep. message each other all kinds of day like time like we're working out like it just it we really let it take over way more of our life than we normally yep. would so weirdly for us working remote means we're like working a lot more and we're more engaged but that's built on the idea of all of us being extremely motivated because we're this is like our company right? yeah like we're right. all innately got steak a hundred x more Skin motivated than yeah yeah and like beyond just like casey the other day i still am having this conversation with casey about how i don't just have a normal job like i have skin in the game i have a <laughs> steak in everything i work on you know what i mean and it's beyond just like a financial stake it's like it's like an, it's like a part of our identity right it's just yeah. kind of what oh, we want yeah, to do and sure. we have you know mm -hmm. hopes and dreams for it outside yep. of financial success so we're extremely motivated so when we work remote it just like it's like supercharges how much you know it like infiltrates mm -hmm. our lives now, if you remove the motivation, I think you have the opposite problem, which is now it's mm. very easy to like not do that, like not really do as much work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So at these, I mean, a side effect of being large is it's really hard to motivate your workforce. Yeah. So do yeah, big I can see why they, they struggle with that. Do they just know, like in leadership at big companies, do they just know that like, Ultimately, we get like 10% of an employee's effort that they mm -hmm. would be giving at a startup. But if we have a million of them, it's enough. <laughs> yeah, and everyone like lies to themselves. And it, like, you know, that thing that like work always inflates the time you have. So it always feels like mm -hmm. everyone's doing as much as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, so this is what but, like when they talk yeah. about corporate culture and like principles and all this stuff, it's to like, <laughs> basically it's religion. You're trying to like brainwash everyone under you to like, just to get that 10% out of them so that everyone's not just completely checked out doing nothing. Is that the idea? Yeah, I think. Or the I money remember, is the motivator. Sorry, I'm answering my I remember questions. even when I was young, I remember my dad saying that, yeah, if you have someone in the office and they spend 40% of their time working, that's like very good. That's like a, mm. you should be really happy with that. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's just accepted. There's just like, there's always going to be, again, this tension of, one party's trying to get as much out of it. The other party's trying to get as little, trying to put as yeah. little work out there as possible and it's like so, arrive at some middle ground. It's so foreign being a startup founder and like you, we've just only worked for ourselves on things for ourselves. We work 100% of the time and then like cut into our life sometimes to work more because the thing needs more attention. Like there's no moment of my, or is it like comms and stuff? Are they just saying like, the 40% doesn't include like all the wasted time, like breaks and communication and. Yeah. Meetings. I mean, wh whatever it is, like, it's just, there's like you, room for, for, there's like wiggle room for you to like do more or less. And I think that's, yeah, that's kind of what like amounts to. Yeah, but do you feel like you spend 100% of your time working? Like I feel well, like. Well, no, but okay. I think the difference is there's no one for me to scam, you know, back, I mean, back yeah, when yeah. I was more in consulting, yeah, I was playing that game of like, how can I build the most hours with the least amount of work? Of course, it's mm. a natural incentive. Yeah, but in it's that like case, I was like sugar. scamming the customer. You're trying but, to be uh, the most efficient. Your body's just trying to get the most yeah, exactly. thing for the least effort. <laughs> yeah, and that that's just a natural state of things. But yeah. now, when you're when you're doing your own thing, there's no one to like 
There's no one no to like scammed. pull that on, you know. You're just gonna you're scamming yourself. You're scamming so. yourself, yeah. You're just all that stuff just goes away. Yeah, <laughs> I just I can't imagine like only spending forty percent of my day like moving things forward. Whatever work is, like that must be nice. I guess is what I would say. Working for other people and just clocking in, clocking out. Or yeah, that's that's, nice. that's a trade off. Like you get yeah. to do that, and then you lose a bunch of other stuff, but. uh but that that's kind of why I don't like this whole it feels entitled for people to be like, no, we should let us work remote. It's like mm. you're trying to have everything like you can't yeah. just can't be an, an employee and have like the exact type of life you want and like mm-hmm. just have everything. Um, so true. And it, it like especially like I especially don't care because like these are engineers at Amazon. Like you're not you're making a crazy amount of money yeah. for this stuff and right. to be like to have like this like weird like pedo- like moral pedestal you're standing on about like mm. working remote like yeah it does get kind of moral it, doesn't it like people start like attacking the company like they just committed a hate crime i mean it's like how dare they yeah. <laughs> also the company is just made of employees like you that are making these decisions like it's yeah they're, right it's like, your peers I, ultimately yeah like, like it's made the decision yeah yeah um so mm-hmm. you know I, it just i i, I have little that it like just draws a little empathy for me because like these are like yeah. this is like a very privileged category of people like i don't really care about this struggle you know mm-hmm. so this podcast is long enough now like two uh two years no mm-hmm. how long have we been doing this two years almost two years that's crazy uh i'm getting distracted by my my uh, qualifier at the beginning of this statement uh it's long enough now but i feel like we should check in every once in a while on the cycle where are we at i i've asked you this probably in the last three months but like have things come off of the the quantitative easing interest zero interest rate era like has the collapse from all that come yet or is it still waiting are we still pending man i have no idea well they, they just cut rates yesterday officially oh they did 0.5 0.5 that's something yeah so was it my uh, the adjustable rate mortgage out. will finally go down a little bit yeah no kidding um, did the did the market like blow up yeah super up super priced points? in but uh, it, yeah, it's probably. it's so like to me it's a lot like you know how like comedy used to be straightforward then like we invented sarcasm then we invented like double <laughs> sarcasm and then triple sarcasm you know like everything is like so so layered now it feels yeah. that way with the market also it's like bad news is good news but then no we go back to good news is good news and now we're back to bad you know it just keeps slipping because it's like yeah the the possibility of a rate cut causes prices to go up because we're excited that money but will then be when cheap the again. The cut isn't as big as they thought it'd be. It crash or when it just happens, now the possibility is gone, so everyone's cashing oh. in, so the prices go down. It's just like, but then, like that can circle like, wrap around again. So yeah, I, I, the market so is just so untethered from forgetting, events. Forgetting forgetting about the market, then how do you feel about like the economy, capital E? You know, the economy. Mostly well, in the, the tech world. I don't care about everybody else. I mean, I do, the, but I don't. All this stuff is just so funny because the technical problem we've had is that our economy is too good. Like, that's mm. the problem we've had over the past really? couple of years. And it's, it's too good. It's easy for people to, like, forget that because we always talk about it in a negative way. I never knew yeah. that. Could you please explain? It's too well, good. Well, like, why is inflation high? Is because there's a lot of money. It's because unemployment is low. It's because mm. people are making a lot of money and spending a lot of it and it's outpacing oh, so what's wrong with our inflation? supply well like, if you I have an overheated economy yeah. uh i mean the problem is like you can exhaust like okay the, the root problem is we don't have enough stuff that's like, the root problem oh we don't have enough stuff enough for the stuff. amount of people that can on paper afford it mm. so what the fed has been trying to do for the past couple of years is actually make our economy worse on purpose <laughs> by making money less available by like targeting an increase this is what's so funny like the president will always like tout unemployment numbers they'll be like oh unemployment is like every month in the report yeah the president's like record low unemployment but on the flip side the fed is like fuck it's too low like they're, they're trying to like increase it you know uh, uh, they're trying to increase unemployment so yeah so the huh. fed is trying to lower the amount of consumption that's happening so we can have like a smoother transition while like these supply gaps are fixed okay and that's the state we've been in and it's been exaggerated in tech because you know that's where all like the future facing investment goes in so when 
the Fed slows down, tries to like make the economy less overheated, the most overheated places have a drastic, you know, reaction. Uh, wh so. Why? Mm, okay. So they, they can't just let it, I'm, I feel so dumb. This is so hard for me to track. They can't just let it keep overheating to infinity because we don't have enough stuff to consume. Yep. And, and yeah, and it's kind of like climate change. There's like a run, there's like runaway effects and feedback loops, and you start to get into hyperinflation, which is like not recoverable. Mm. Um, okay. Oh, I've heard of so those. that's happening. They want like a smoother right? transition. That's what their okay. goal has been. A smoother transition to just normal inflation, not inflated, not deflated, just flation. <laughs> <Flation. Ta -da. laughs> we just want plain old garden variety flation. Yes. Regular. Exactly. Online. Okay. Yeah. So the, it's it's weird. So the past couple of years were like, oh, like, you know, jobs with like the tech where like people are making less money and like there's less jobs and it's all this like negative economic sentiment. The actual problem is that it's a uh, it was overheated. So when so, you say a smooth transition, it's if they don't do anything, it'll be a crash transition. It'll like fall to a deflated state or something. I mean, they're concerned about hyperinflation, which is there's oh, like historical examples of what that they are actually concerned about it. OK, that that was a concern. Yeah. I mean, because we yeah. did print a lot of money, so yeah, we need to like let the economy absorb that slowly. Mm, OK, um, is so, it working? Yeah, are they taking steps that are working? Yes, I, it, it's surprising. So because you would think I've always felt like interventions were very ineffective or like had second order effects and it's kind of hard to, you know, like intervene in a complex mm -hmm. system like this, but it feels like the Fed like kind of orchestrated it pretty well. Like oh. inflation is come is has is now down to where the goals are. We didn't have like this runaway thing. Really, uh, and hard to say That's if it was literally news. exactly what they did. But um, yeah, I mean, we all feel bad about the tech sector, but like, what are we comparing it to? We're like comparing it to like a hyperinflated. 2020 2021 state wait what do we so, feel bad about we feel bad about the tech sector i didn't feel bad so i want to know what everyone else feels bad about that i missed. No, like we're like oh there's less jobs and like mm. you know like we people aren't able to make as much money but mm. it's all relative to like this overheated state so mm -hmm. yeah i don't know so i i don't know where anything's going i i just feel like whatever state we were in a couple years ago i don't we've had a contraction i don't know if it's going to keep going um i don't see how it gets back to that that state yeah, that original, but again if yeah. you're in the top x percent of people in this industry it largely doesn't affect you mm. yeah okay yeah uh so i want to i want to talk about what you've been up to on twitter because i i've literally been on so little that i haven't seen your 30 tweets a day could you just like <laughs> tell me some of the bangers like what's been going on or just what's going on with our friends just catch me up uh what's going on uh, huh i don't know mm -hmm. are you just like done you're just not gonna come back oh i'm gonna come back i always come back it just it takes a little while it's kind of to be honest it's kind of nice to just like wake up and program and then be done and then wake up and program <laughs> and like not think about the internet and all that's going on on twitter or whatever like i haven't thought about what's <laughs> happening on twitter and i don't know how long like, until just now, which I would like to hear from you, you know, is there anything I've missed that was really fun? No, it's just the same old, same old stuff, you know. Prime and Teach um, had DHH on, just copying yeah. us. Yeah. Now DHH has officially done the terminal tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Clean sweep, both podcasts. <laughs> uh, I called him a moron yesterday. I hope Who, he DHH saw. DHH or Prime? Yeah. No, DHH. You called DHH a moron? What for? No, it was just a funny thing. He, he was like, he was like. DHH was like, man, these YouTube comments are really nice. Usually there's people that, you know, reply calling me a moron. And of course oh. I replied to him. Moron. <laughs> moron. That's a good one. Which, you know, that that wasn't the first time I had a single word tweet that said moron. I like searched my history. Oh, I'm like, wow. I think I've done this before. And I've had a bunch of them. <laughs> they probably weren't inviting it the other time. No, no, just... no. Yeah. <laughs> moron Nothing reply else really guy. It's just the same old. I feel like uh, there was this funny thing I saw yesterday, which I loved. Um, so you know how Postmark, I don't know if you've ever been following all this Postmark stuff, but they got it's acquired email, a bit ago. Yeah, they had like some pretty yeah. crazy downtime. And it's it seems like a result of they got acquired and like companies been like stripped down and it's just not mm. a good product anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and the recent CEO 
like replies replied to them being like or like there was some like post markdown time thing and the recent ceo replied being like switch over to resend blah 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 and he like links to something he's like just gonna drop this here and then wes boss replies being like well if you're just gonna drop that there you should also drop this there which is like all of resend's downtime issues mm. uh because so recent was like ambulance chasing basically like being like post yeah. is down use us but then recent is like a crazy amount of downtime um including stuff they haven't even like officially written up like there was one thing from a couple weeks ago i have grown to really dislike recent and that company really? in general uh i'm just dming right now i don't know if we should cut this out <laughs> DMing. you reminded me that he had dm me he wants uh, to know about bulk terminal coffee just heads up <laughs> oh the recent ceo <laughs> yeah. yeah tell him to fuck off <laughs> oh i don't know if they should say it or not i really don't no, uh, no they shouldn't say it I'm, no, I'm just kidding we can definitely take okay. our money like i don't care about that it's uh but you know that's actually a perfect example right they are just yet another company that are just spending stupid amounts of money on stuff that's irrelevant and at the end of the day they're just building yet another wrapper of ses like I, it's really an interesting conversation the the just the <laughs> multiple angles it's so interesting <laughs> but yeah, yeah it's a uh, it's it's like you go and you're like i'm gonna found a company this is like a very big decision in your life like it's your career mm -hmm. you decide it's going to be a venture scale thing again another big decision uh, if it works out, you're going to spend the next 10 years of your life working on this thing. Mm -hmm. And you're like, I'm going to build a thing that sends email. That's like what you're going to do mm -hmm. uh, of all that. And to me, it's just like, what a waste of resources, effort, whatever. Um, and it's just, you know, people have done this before. There's a million email things mm -hmm. like, yeah, mm -hmm. just because you like wrap it in this fancy design. They have this like philosophy page about their, like this like really pretentious designed like this is our philosophy on like products in life and like we believe that documentation should be good and we believe that they have a whole section on how they're like uptime should be like water like just, just like crazy shit like that and it's funny to have that okay. section when like they've literally had the worst downtime i've seen i'm gonna like, defend so i'm gonna defend this person because i love dracula i use it on everything it's my keyboard theme like my physical keycaps dracula did their ceo color. make dracula he did is it Darkula or Dracula? Dracula. Dracula? Okay. Yeah. Just going to defend okay. him for that reason That's fine. alone. And because he, he wants to buy some terminal coffee for his team. You know what? Maybe we could do a Dracula coffee. I would love to do this, actually, just to spite you. Can we do a Dracula-themed <laughs> terminal coffee <laughs> partnership with your favorite CEO? <laughs> uh, we'll talk about it offline. That would be the best. Again, it's not even the CEO. It's so just a pro I'm just like... It's the product. Yeah. I get, it's kind of like, just, I'm just tired of this playbook over culture. and over again. Yeah. 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 It's, he's, that's not the only start. There's a lot of startups doing similar, yeah. like low, uh, it's like not having your sights high, like kind of aiming for medium outcomes and like doing the whole startup thing. Yeah. And it's just like, and then it just creates a ton of noise. So the other thing is, Going back to their downtime, the last downtime was because their AWS account. I'm, I'm actually make a quick little short about this later because I've been trying to figure out how to explain this. So their last downtime was because their uh, SES sending got banned in US East One, which mm. gives you the hint that they just have a single AWS account and they put all their customers in there, which if you are trying to be an infrastructure provider, I hope you at least understand why you shouldn't just use a single AWS account for this reason. But this brings up like a more root problem, which is AWS built a one giant system and they solved the multi-tenant problem. You hmm. can go sign up for AWS. You can use a bunch of resources. Yeah. It's okay if somebody else is also using AWS and they use it for something sketchy or they like have yep. a ton of traffic. It doesn't affect you. They have built a multi-tenant system, mm -hmm. has a lot of work, and they solve that problem. Then yeah. you have these middlemen come in where they sign up for one AWS account <laughs> and they put all their customers in it. And all of a sudden, all these they problems the come problem back. That, yeah, it's like, I'm, a, I'm assuming their stuff got blocked because one recent customer did something crazy and affected mm -hmm. all of them. Mm -hmm. And they'll spend the next six months like fixing this problem that was already fixed. And they'll write a bunch yeah. of blog posts about, hey, we've solved all this crazy stuff for you. It's like, no, you just, <laughs> it just was already solved. Like this wasn't a problem. Uh -huh. um, and so much of effort is going into this 
this thing just kind of re-solving the same problems again and yeah to yeah, me it's just I like believe what a waste any like cloud wrapper companies and you have to like be intelligent enough about a company and know enough about a company to know whether they really are just like this third layer cloud wrapper like planet scale not a cloud wrapper they're an actual business they build actually great technology and they yeah. happen to use cloud resources for that but there's a difference mm -hmm. like th there's so many startups that got funded in this kind of like i don't know why i say third layer what's the first layer i don't know i'm considering like the public clouds the second layer I don't know what the first layer is. Just that's my terminology. Okay. It's yeah. the third layer. <laughs> first layer is like electricity, atoms. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. The first uh, layer is the layer that God works with. And there's. Yeah. <laughs> and then the second layer is where AWS comes in. Okay. <laughs> and then the third layer is Resend and Vercel. Okay. Yeah. I just don't believe in those companies. I just think they're all going to die. What's funny is uh, during this recent thing earlier, because everyone, everyone was looking for postmark alternatives and recent kept coming up. Uh, again, to me, it's extremely obvious when there's a company in this category, but apparently it's not super obvious. Mm. But you know who has a good nose for it is Levels. Because uh, mm. Levels was like, what the fuck? Like, this just seems like another... He calls it VC pump and dump. Like, he had described it in a bunch of ways. So yeah. he has a great nose for it, but the thing that he's wrong about is he always frames it as the VCs are scamming you. No, the VCs are losing money on this too. I guarantee you <laughs> right. they are going to, in the end, lose money on all of this. These are not yeah. like super so smart. Like, that's the one thing he's wrong about. Like, they're, the like every, yeah, no one's they're making not, money. Uh -huh. It's just a they're waste of losing. resources. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was going on. That's been bugging me. Or it's been. Did everybody I'm just, like, switch tired over? Of this same story over and over again. Yeah. I haven't really been on the internet since we did the whole Laracon thing. Did everybody switch over to PHP? Is everyone running Laravel now? Did we there do our There were a job? lot of comments being like, oh man, I'm sure a lot of people checked it out that they haven't, <laughs> nice. they haven't before. Um, and then they were I've like, doing oh, much of PHP elixir. looks like that? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Arrows instead of dots? I'm out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We love PHP. PHP so great. Buy Artisan Coffee. Terminal.shop. This episode is sponsored by Bye. Terminal.shop. You know what I'd like to do someday? I'd like to like get so good at an ad read that like it seems like it's just a pre-recorded ad read, but I'm actually saying it exactly the same every time. Does that make sense? <laughs> That'd be fun. Like, and then maybe throw in one little change, like one little intonation shift. It? Yeah, yeah. Just like it could have just automated this, could have just recorded it and played the thing. But instead, I'm going to say it every time. Oh, let's okay. take a break. I'm sorry. I just remembered I used to do that sometimes. <laughs> That's what you do on podcasts. We're gonna take a break for the podcast. Like, why do people what? take breaks? Do they like do we, a break? Do podcasts take break? Here's the thing. Oh, yeah. I, you don't listen. I just to don't listen to podcasts, so I have no I do. idea if what we're doing I, yeah. is. <laughs> I can tell you they do things on podcasts that they don't actually do, and you'd believe me. That's funny. Uh, no, they're always like, "We're gonna take a break," and then they just come right back. And I'm like, did, "Did they have to pee? Could they not have just cut that out?" Like, I don't know what the break is. Yeah. Okay. So the. Uh, the other thing, oh, what were we just talking about? Mm, One other thing. PHP, Laravel. Oh, yeah. Lambos. So I've been doing a bunch of Elixir. I started streaming it, oh, by yeah. the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, I caught I I'm caught two one. days into it. Um, uh, a little hurt that you didn't notice. I was in there 50% of right, the streams. Right, right. You were, you yeah. were in there. Okay, okay. I forgot. Yeah, oh, right, yeah. Hmm. Whatever. <laughs> you said something about Tailwind, if I recall correctly. <laughs> <laughs> I just find an opportunity to... Just shill Tailwind at every turn. Well, I, I'm stuck using Tailwind. So I'm using uh, Elixir and Phoenix and, and Live. I'm trying to use all that stuff for the thing mm -hmm. I'm building. Uh, but I had a post yesterday about this. Um, so I've used Elixir for a very long time. So I know how to write Elixir. I'm like very familiar with it. I've mm -hmm. done some pretty like deep things with it. But this is my first time using like the batteries included, like out yeah. of the box Phoenix, experience Ecto, that, uh, that you get that with stuff. Phoenix and all that. Yeah. And man, is it, it is not a good onboarding experience. Like mm. there is just so much going on. It uses like a crazy amount of macros. So it's like really hard. Macros basically let you invent magic mm -hmm. in the, in the language invent basically. Magic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like so hard. It, there's like, there's just so much thrown at you right away. We're just spoiled with Next.js, let's be honest. I mean, the meta frameworks have really taken it to Next another JS level has the same in JavaScript. Too. <laughs> but Sorry, that was it, double sarcasm. I don't know if everyone caught that. But or was it triple? <laughs> it might have been triple. I'm not sure. Go ahead. Yeah, so we uh So I'm like, okay, what this 
these frameworks, I think they don't have this competitive pressure where mm. they need to like really focus on this progressive disclosure thing. So a- after using it for two days, I'm like, oh, the way to do this is I have to go pick up a book on Phoenix and Live View and just read it, which is fine. Like I've done that a bunch of times before, mm-hmm. but that's just not optimized for adoption. Whereas if you look at something like, let's take Astro, whatever, you know, they're entering this like hyper competitive market. They are way better about like, here's like a really small starting point. You can kind of get a handle mm. of things and you kind of progressively mm-hmm. add stuff and like you kind of grow with it. Um, it that just, just like doesn't seem to exist. It's just there's so much more competition in JavaScript world because there's a framework every week. Is that the idea? I think I'm, I'm, that's like my explanation, like like the, to explain the differences. I just think that I, we've got, so like we've put in so much work to make it so SST is one file. Like that was so much work. Mm-hmm. to like get it to that point like years of refining and figuring that out so you can start with a single file and then get more complex over time and yep. you start like a phoenix app and it's like <laughs> so many files and that's not even enough you like start that then you have to like run all these generators to generate even more files and it's just like oh geez it's just so much thrown at you and it's so the different like such a different mindset than what we're like what we like spend all day thinking about um so yeah i think these frameworks would benefit a lot if they like rethought their process of yeah. How can we make this feel like a natural progression where someone can tinker, learn, tinker, learn, as opposed to feeling like I like learn all this stuff up front and then actually yep. build my thing. Cause I, I'm like, as someone that's like, and like has used Elixir a lot, if I'm having a tough time getting through this, like that's, mm-hmm. that's a good sign that it needs to be improved. I, I will say, I do think the like MVC, MVVM, like if your framework still uses those paradigms, I just don't think people have the attention span in 2024 to like <laughs> use that. You know what I mean? Like I, the Phoenix app we had at StatMuse, this giant, giant Phoenix app, the number of files in that app just boggles the mind. I guess it's like our node modules. It's like insanely verbose amount of files and it's all the MVC stuff, I guess. And same, I saw people criticizing Laravel now that Laravel got a little more attention uh, for the same. It's like, there's so many files. I can't, I can't wrap my head around all this. I guess JavaScript world, we've, we've pared it down. Uh, there's still too many files. I mean, there's too many like stupid dot files in your root directory for like all the different tools, but. Well, you have to add those in. Yeah. You have to opt in. So I blame I guess, people for that. Yeah. <laughs> people. <you. laughs> I blame people for all this Dax. Uh, <laughs> but I do think like the MVC thing is just, it's too archaic feeling at this point. I don't know. Do you agree with that? Or do you think it's like good? I just don't know what the do alternative that. is. If you're doing a, uh, well, what are we doing in JavaScript? We've got an alternative. I don't, I don't we don't, I don't, we don't I, do MVC. I don't, I just don't like do server render JavaScript. So like I, domain just... driven design. Right. Yeah, and to is be that... honest, I learned all the domain-driven design stuff from Elixir, like the f- mm. the Phoenix documentation on context is where I like picked mm. up a lot of stuff I do in JavaScript. But okay, I don't know. What I'm yeah, about I'm that. okay with the final set of files being large. I think I'm technically okay with that. I understand there's a lot of capability in there, and that's why it's all there. Like if you say there's too many files, you're gonna say, well, your framework doesn't can't do X Y Z thing. So fine, I'll give them that those files are necessary. I just want to like get there over time. Like, I want to be like, okay, I want to do events now. And then I start to add the files related to events. I don't want it to all like bootstrapped and set up and like kind of confusing me when I'm not interested in yeah. like 90% of the stuff that's there. So to me, it's purely an onboarding initial adoption experience thing. Mm. Um, whether it's not too many files in the end, I think that's, you know, that's kind of subjective because people will argue, well, I need those, you know? That's so yeah. reasonable, Dax. Why are you going to be so reasonable? just trying to be inflammatory i'm just trying to not have annoying people reply to me Any with replies. annoying thoughts <laughs> that, that's that's really all it comes down to people have yeah. really stupid surface level replies to things mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. if i'm not specific i will get those it's inevitable i get them anyway but yeah i feel like you became too much yeah. of a character on the internet you you gotta lay a little lower you became a little too like people want to they want to say things to you in reply people don't really care to say things in reply maybe because i just talk about like <laughs> eating plants and jujitsu and stuff and they don't have anything to say but i've laid low enough that i don't really get the angry replies and if i do i guess i don't notice because i'm not on twitter i don't know well i'm i'm currently thinking about going in one or two directions i guess that that's one option we described but then when i think about like dhh oh, and levels i'm yeah. like they're like way more unreasonable than i am and yeah. i'm like should i just do that like would i just Lean be happier in. maybe can't tell maybe who knows
All right, yeah. I gotta get off here. I'm sorry, I'm staring at <laughs> I've gotten distracted. Uh, I'm staring at the waiting for review on the app thing, and I have to make changes to the web thing because our thing uses the web. And if I don't make those changes, it's not really ready. Just okay. go, 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 well, you know? Be before you go, uh, for our event in New York, we need to figure out some stuff with you. Just Ooh, yeah. uh, let's figure it out. Let's do it now. No, no, not not right now. Oh, okay. I'm saying we me and Lizzie need to talk to you a bunch about a few things because there's like mm -hmm. The production of it itself mm -hmm. is going to be a little tricky. So I just want to like talk through that to make sure that. Yep. Love it. Uh, we're going to have some staff at the venue. Ooh, staff. With like helping a us. <laughs> like a, no, like... a major D. I don't know. What are staff? I don't know. No, no, like, like, like tech people, like tech. Oh, because they have like nice equipment to like do yes. mic speakers, Ooh. all that stuff. I like this idea. Wait, are we just but doing we it on iPhone out. though? Can we just record everything on iPhone now? Is that what we decided? Well, I'm getting my new iPhone tomorrow. I'm excited oh, about that. So there you go. We'll just record on your new iPhone. No, 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 no. Cameras, no, no, DSLR, no, no, no. the whole thing. I don't know. We we need to talk we'll about talk, it. I, yeah, like, I'll talk. Let's, yeah. let's talk. You, yeah. you and your people will talk to me and my people. <laughs> begin, bo vegan bot will be my people, and you and Liz. Well, we have people. a DM with the with all I you know, guys that yeah, nobody's yeah. replied to. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hearted it or something. <laughs> I did something. Then. I don't even think Vegan checks that Slack, so I don't know how we're going to contact oh, him. I don't not. even know if he's confirmed going. Like it's, it's uh, going to be a mess. It's going to be a disaster. I got to find that message. Was that in? Oh, I was in Slack. I forget we're a Slack company now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 As soon as you start doing real right things, now. you have to be a Slack company. Yeah. We're a doing real sign. things. Real things. I thumbs up and hearted it. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Thanks. It's been good. Thanks, Dax. Thanks for the thumbs up and the heart. <laughs> you're welcome there's more where that came from <laughs> more laughy faces and crying laughing faces those i do those <laughs> a lot okay all right see ya see ya